Learning English helps me become more involved in my child's education. SBS acknowledges the traditional custodians of country and their connections and continuous care for the skies, lands, and waterways throughout Australia. Hi, my name is Nikki, and like some of you, I have a little one starting school this year. One of the most exciting and scariest things about school actually happens before it begins. It's the choosing. This was how it was for Claire and Alan. Let's listen in on their conversation about how they chose a new school for their children. Your daughter is starting school soon, right? How exciting! Which school did you enroll her in? Yeah, we're very excited. We've enrolled her in a private all-girls school. Does she like it? She met the girls in her house during orientation and they really hit it off. What about your son? Well, my husband and I had to really brainstorm on schools for our son because he needs extra support for his hearing impairment. Luckily, we found a great government school for him in our area. <laughs> Quite a bit of information there, huh? Let's go through it slowly. Alan and Claire talked about their choices for schools. Alan says, We've enrolled her in a private all-girls school. Public schools are operated and run by the government and have lower fees than private schools. Private schools can be run by either independent organizations or religious groups. When a child starts in a school, we say that they enroll. An all-girls school is an example of a single-sex school. There are also schools that only allow in boys. When all genders are allowed into a school, it is called a co-ed, which is short for co-educational. Alan is happy about the school he chose for his daughter because... She met the girls in her house during orientation and they really hit it off. An orientation is an event in school where new students are invited to see their new school and are introduced to its culture and programs. Students are placed in groups called houses. Each house has members from across the different year levels. While Alan chose to send his daughter to private school, Claire decided on another type of school. She says, Well, my husband and I had to really brainstorm on schools for our son because he needs extra support for his hearing impairment. Luckily, we found a great government school for him in our area. To brainstorm means to be part of a discussion, to come up with ideas and solutions. Claire's son needs extra support because of his hearing impairment. We say that someone has a hearing impairment if they can't hear very well or at all. There are also special schools and programs for children with high intellectual ability. These are called selective schools. There's also support for newly arrived migrant students when it comes to English, but we'll learn more about that later in this episode. So now that we know where Alan and Claire's children are enrolled, what are their reasons for liking their choices? Let's go back to their conversation. We like the fact that her school focuses on the well-being of the kids, not just the grades. The facilities are great as well. For us, proximity is really important. We'll be able to walk to school instead of having to worry about driving. <laughs> Those are great reasons for both. Let's hear them again. First, Alan says, We like the fact that her school focuses on the well-being of the kids, not just on grades. Well-being is the state of being happy, healthy, and or comfortable. Alan also says, The facilities are great. Facilities are the places and pieces of equipment 
that are in the school for the children to use, such as the playground or gym. Claire also shares what she likes about her son's school. For us, proximity is really important. Proximity here means how close the school is to where Claire lives. For some parents, it might be important to be involved in their child's school as well. In Australia, it is very common for parents to volunteer. That is, to help out in their child's school. Let's listen in on a conversation between Alan and Claire. Only this time, they are parents talking about volunteering in the canteen of their children's school. Hi Claire, do you have canteen duty today? Yes, I'm rusted today. Are you planning to volunteer as well? Yes, I just need to get my working with children check and then I can start. We learned that Claire is on canteen duty today. Do you remember the phrase she used to say that she is volunteering today? I'm rusted today. To be rostered means to have been given a particular time to work. Alan is also planning to volunteer and says, I just need to get my working with children check and I can start. A working with children check is a screening process to check that people are allowed to work with or care for children. Now let's go back to Alan and Claire's conversation. Claire tells Alan, Some of the benefits of volunteering in the canteen. A perk is that you can get free lunch for you and your son. But aside from that, you'll be able to keep an eye on your son when he thinks you're not around. (laughs) True. Hope you can help me learn the ropes. Maybe volunteering for canteen duty is something you'd like to try. Because there are so many benefits like the ones Claire mentioned. A perk is that you can get free lunch for you and your son. A perk is a benefit or advantage. Free lunch is one of the perks of volunteering in the canteen. Sounds awesome! Another perk of volunteering is... You'll be able to keep an eye on your son when he thinks you're not around. To keep an eye on someone means to watch someone closely or know what they are doing. Alan said... (laughs) Haha, <laughs> true. Hope you can help me learn the ropes. To learn the ropes means to learn how to do a particular job or task. We've talked about some of the additional support children with disabilities and children with high intellectual ability can receive from school. But what about support for newly arrived migrant students who want to improve their English skills? We have with us today Cindy Valdez Adams, the president of the Association for Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages New South Wales, or ATSOL NSW for short, to talk about just that. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Cindy. What kind of support do you give to schools and teachers? We do a lot. For schools, we provide resources. And for our teachers, we conduct workshops to develop learning and teaching strategies to develop the English language. How about parents? Do you know that it's actually really important to continue speaking your first language at home while learning English in school? We found that those who are fluent or know their first language really well are able to learn and understand English more easily. So don't lose your first language. Not only is it important when it comes to learning English, it's important when it comes to maintaining your own identity. That's true. What other important things do English learners have to be aware of? That learning everyday English can be challenging, even more so if it's academic English. It can take up to five to seven years for migrant students to catch up with the English terms and phrases used in subjects like science or history. Learning can be challenging. 
but I encourage you to keep on going and be patient with yourself. You can do it. There is support in school to help you get better at English. You're not alone. That's great advice, Cindy. Can I ask another thing from you? Of course. Would you mind helping me practice the phrases and words we learned in this episode? I would love to. See if you can remember the meanings before hearing the answers. What does orientation mean? It is an event where new students are invited to see their new school and are introduced to its culture, students, and programs. To learn the ropes means... To learn the ropes means to learn how to do a particular job or task. We heard different ways to talk about different types of schools. Let's practice with Alan and Claire. We've enrolled our daughter in a private all-girls school. She met the girls in her house during orientation and they really hit it off. We found a great government school in our area. For us, proximity is important. We also heard different phrases we can use to talk about becoming a parent volunteer. I'm rusted today. I just need to get my working with children check and then I can start. A perk is that you can get free lunch for you and your son. For learning notes and transcripts, visit the SBS Learn English website, where you can also find a quiz to test your listening and understanding skills. We are SBS Learn English. I'm your host, Nikki. Thank you for listening. This was the SBS Learn English podcast. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Or reach out on Facebook. We are SBS Learn English.